then tighten it down with a 10 millimeter socket. Don't over tighten these, you don't want to strip them off in your block or your oil pump. So snug them down nicely, but you don't want them too loose because this thing walks or shakes loose. Um, it could cut into the belt. Okay, now before we pull the pin on the tensioner and put our covers back on, um, we can go around and check the spacing on our guides just to make sure that they're correct. It's very important because if they're not, um, you're going to have issues. So just uh, I'm going to tell you how critical that is. All right, now everything's set up, ready to go. We'll pull the pin on the tensioner. Now we'll supply the pressure it needs on the belt to stay in place. Now we'll go ahead and put the covers back on. Okay, next we're going to remove the crank bolt so we can put the crank pulley on. The crank pulley has a notch in it, as you can see, as does the crank. This notch has to be lined up just right. It's kind of hard to see in there, so if you don't know where it is, you can kind of turn it and wiggle it around until you get it on. Thread that back on. This is where you'll need a friend to hold the brake down, put it in third gear. Clutch released. We'll take a 22 millimeter breaker bar and we will tighten it up. And there you go. Okay, next we're going to do the AC belt. Um, slip the AC belt over the compressor and then put it on the row on the back of the crank pulley. Make sure all of your grooves are lined up correctly and that the belt rests on there evenly. Next, you'll grab your tensioner and you'll put that in the grooves where they're supposed to be and you'll insert the, the lower bolt, 12 millimeter bolt, and you'll thread that almost all the way in or maybe just finger tight. Once you've got that snug finger tight, grab a flat blade screwdriver and wedge it between the tensioner pulley and the crank pulley and pry back almost behind the alternator and line up your upper bolt hole and thread it in finger tight. Once that's all the way threaded in, tighten it down with a ratchet. Okay, next we're going to put the accessory belt on, um, line it up on all the grooves. Put it around the crankshaft pulley, line it up on the grooves. Once you've got them all lined up, you will tighten the adjuster screw or bolt on the alternator. This will lift the alternator up and in turn tighten the belt. You don't want this belt too tight. Um, you also don't want it too loose so the belt doesn't slip or whine or squeal. What I generally do is I'll tighten it to where you have about a quarter inch of free play. I mean right now we got quite a bit so we got quite a bit more to go. See, you got about a, about a quarter inch of free play on the belt. Once you've got that adjusted where you want it, you'll want to lock it in with this bolt here. Snug that down nice and tight and do the same thing on the other side of the alternator. This bracket here needs to face upward for the cover. So make sure that stays there. Well, next we're going to put the radiator in. Um, if you haven't already, tighten the drain valve up nice and snug, nice and tight. You don't want that to drip, lose your coolant. 
Okay, once you got that tightened up, you're going to slip the radiator in place. Um, at the bottom down here, you'll see some rubber mounts. These holes, that's where the radiator tabs, stems, are going to rest. So make sure you get those in there and lined up and put in right. Okay, next we're going to take the radiator brackets. Um, this one here does not have the yellow piece of plastic that holds the hood prop. That one does. That goes on the driver's side. This one will go on the passenger side. Uh, place them over the top here and bolt them in place with a 12 millimeter bolt. Snug those down. And then next we'll plug in the wiring harnesses, one on each side. They're a lot easier plugging in than pulling out. There's that one. We got the other one. Next thing we'll do is we'll connect these two hoses. Um, the small one goes here. The large one goes here. Make sure that you have the ring clamps on them. And then the power steering reservoir, just right here. If you unclip that, let's make sure we clip that right back in place. There we go. Okay, now we're going to replace the upper radiator hose. Um, put that one on here. Slip it in place. Put the other side right here. Put it in place. We're going to tighten that down nice and firm. Um, these are known for leaking, so make sure you get it nice and tight. Same goes for the other side, and then we'll get the bottom hose and pretty much do the same thing. Okay, now get the passenger or driver's side radiator hose on the thermostat. Get it on nice and snug and secure it with a clamp nice and tight. Now is a great time to plug in both of your radiator fan harness plugs. Okay, next we'll snap in the power steering line to the radiator clamp. We'll work over here and install the coolant expansion tank. There is a little notch at the bottom of the tank that fits right into a hole down there. And you'll slip that ear in and clip it in place and it should stay. Now insert the tube into the tank and push it all the way down. Next we're going to replace the accessory belt cover. You slide it onto that bolt right there next to the AC compressor. And then you also have these li this little tab here that needs to go inside that hole. So make sure that lines up, press it down firmly, it will pop into place. Once it does, add the other bolt, 10 millimeter, snug and tighten that down. And then tighten that nut down there, also 10 millimeter. and then replace your throttle cable push tabs into the holes on the top and sides of the cover. And you just snap right into place. Okay, next we're going to replace the Snorkus if you removed one. We'll clip that into place over here. And then add the bolts. Those are 10 millimeter.
going to remove the radiator cap if you have one. I believe the 0203s might not have this radiator cap. If not, we're going to add that to the coolant turbo coolant tank up top here. But uh, to get less air bubbles, we prefer to fill this side first. Put in the funnel and add 100% pure coolant. This is undiluted. We're going to pour. I don't know, maybe a half gallon into the radiator. And part way through, we'll stop and add our Subaru coolant additive conditioner. Make sure you shake it well. and then we'll continue with coolant. Once this fills with 100% coolant, we'll match it with an equal amount of water. Okay, we're going to top off the remainder with water. Once that's filled, you can squeeze the upper radiator hose to remove any more bubbles. It might let you let a little bit more in there. If not, you can replace the cap. But the more air you can get out here, the less you'll have to worry about later. Now replace the cap, make sure it's on correctly, sealed, and in place. And then we'll move on to the turbo coolant tank. Start by pouring the rest of your water in there for a 50-50 mix. Now we'll squeeze the upper radiator hose and see if we can get any more air out of it. Each time you get a lot of air come out of that, just uh, keep topping it off with water. It's fine if it overfills, it's just water. You're going to want to do this four or five times until you think you've got as much air as you possibly can get out by hand. And then we'll let the car take care of the rest of the bubbles in our next procedure. Okay, next we're going to top off the coolant tank. We emptied this one since we're replacing the coolant. We want all new coolant. Um, there is an add and fill, add and full line at the bottom of this tank. You're going to want to fill this to the full line. Once you're done filling that, we'll take our negative terminal for the battery and uh, we'll put that on. Okay. You notice that we left the turbo coolant tank without the cap. What we're going to do now is we're going to hop in the car turn the heater on full blast and leave that cap off and slowly fill it with coolant as it drains down and 